If Jane Jacobs were around today and she had a bike, where might she take a ride? Hi, I'm Robin Rothstein, longtime downtown Manhattan resident and arts chair for Community Board 2. For this second landmark bike ride, we check out public art and monuments and landmarks starting in the West Village, routing our way through Greenwich Village, and wrapping it up right on the edge of NoHo. And this ride has a little international flair with connections to Italy, France, Japan, and the UK, and one artist you might have heard of. I couldn't be more excited to share these discoveries with you. So, without further ado, let's rock and roll. First stop, Stonewall National Monument, which is right down the road from the New York City AIDS Memorial where I wrapped up the previous video. I caught up with Christopher Street Tours founder and lead guide Michael Ventriello to learn more about the monument's colorful history. The Stonewall National Monument was dedicated in 2016, and that is in large part due to President Barack Obama. In that, he then declares the National Stonewall Monument, the Stonewall National Monument, which includes the Stonewall Inn itself. It also includes Stonewall Park. It includes, uh, or sorry, Christopher Park, the Gay Liberation Monument, but also the entire area, all of the blocks around Stonewall. So it took 12 years to sort of firmly implant the statues there. And part of the reason that was is because we were living in a very conservative New York at that time in 1980s and sort of moving through um, the local government, but also the national government, where they thought it was too controversial to be installed on public land. The whole thought of it is that it's supposed to represent um, you know, this, this idea of the LGBTQ community as loving and caring and affectionate. Um, it was supposed to have equal representation of men and women, which it does. For the most part, on just sort of a, a regular Tuesday, you know, a regular day, it, it really feels just sort of like a, a quote unquote regular park. There's people there that are reading, there are people reading the newspaper, people chatting. But the thing about the park that I so appreciate is that there, there's just a really amazing magnetic energy about the space all year round, not even talking about pride. And when pride happens, June, all throughout June, but specifically that pride weekend, the last weekend of June, it's just so energetic. Um, there's so, so many people. As a queer community, we, we've celebrated, we've cried, we've fallen in love, we've had heartbreak, and it all sort of wraps around Stonewall. When Pulse was happening, the Pulse nightclub shooting, people gathered at Stonewall. For the Black Lives Matter movement now, people gathered at Stonewall and protested. When marriage equality was passed, both in New York State and on a national level, they gathered at Stonewall in a celebratory kind of way. It, it's a really rare moment and a really rare landmark in that it both honors the history but it also means so much more for people today and for the people of the generation before us and I think for generations to come. So it's, it's just this really, really incredible space that we have here. Next stop, we're hanging a left on Bleecker Street and riding right into what feels like a little corner of Italy. Our Lady of Pompeii Church is a magnificent landmark building that stands on the corner of Bleecker and Carmine Streets and was designed by the eminent architect Matthew W. Delgadio. While this particular building was constructed between the years 1926 and 1928, the Our Lady of Pompeii Catholic Parish was already serving Italian Americans that had established themselves in the South Village for several generations. Adorned with beautiful stained glass, paintings and statues, Our Lady of Pompeii has thankfully reopened to visitors and congregants and is back to providing a quiet respite to anyone who comes through its doors. After visiting the church, consider grabbing a snack or a slice and enjoy a break in charming Father Dimo Square right across the street. Father Antonio Dimo emigrated from Italy to Boston in 1896 to do missionary work. He soon arrived in New York and was eventually appointed pastor of Our Lady of Pompeii. Father Demo Square was named after him in 1940. The park was then renovated in 2007 and provides numerous benches offering visitors space to relax, read, and catch up with friends. 
With Our Lady of Pompeii's gracious Italian-style campanile rising over the piazza-like Father Demo Square, a visit here feels a bit like entering through a portal and finding yourself in a charming Italian town. Next stop, we're heading further east down Bleecker Street to NYU's University Village to see the bust of Sylvette, a towering piece of public art inspired by Picasso's original series of Sylvette paintings that he created in the mid-1950s. I had the great good fortune to catch up with Picasso's muse, the actual Sylvette herself, an acclaimed artist in her own right, and her daughter, professional sculptor Isabel Colton, for a once-in-a-lifetime interview. I am Lydia Colvert. I used to be Sylvette David. Then I got married to uh, Mr. Colbert. <laughs> I became Lydia because of a spiritual uh, man I met to have my name called Lydia, he said. That was a good name for my soul. I signed my pictures, Lydia Colbert, Sylvette David, both of them because I'm still with Picasso in my mind. In 1954, I was very young and immature. Picasso uh, made me sit in his studio and I sat very quiet. I never spoke a word. Picasso did something like 50 works of drawings and paintings of my mum. And yeah. they sort of followed um, a theme as he got to know her. And then at some point he was deciding, I think had always thought about doing large public sculpture. He uh, experimented with making little cardboard cutouts and then he made these small sculptures in metal. Yeah. So he had those already prepared. And then when he met Karl Nesjar sometime later, I think he pulled them out the cupboard and said, how about one of these? The way that that sculpture was made in New York is, is quite a fascinating uh, um, way of making something so large. And it's because I think it was developed by Karl Nesjar um, when they were working on murals and things in Oslo. And it's a way of mixing in natural stone into wet cement and then you cast it into a wooden former or frame and then when it's cast it comes out and it's dried with it's completely white on the outside and what Karl Nesjar did was um, an incredible idea really he was he you know on a scaffolding he'd spray with a hose pipe mm -hmm. and sandblast Picasso's lines onto the not onto it actually, it's clearing the white and revealing the black underneath, which was probably flint or something like that. Picasso had many women, and it's me who is in the middle of New York. And it looks beautiful standing there. I always wanted to go and visit, but I'd never been able to. So I hope one day maybe. I love Picasso and he's well known all over the world. So I am honored to be the model for it. And I'm very touched that it's the university because young people can are open to new things and seeing that statue is amazing. Yes. It's like a monument to youth. To youth, yes. Um. And eternity, eternal. I hope they keep it forever. <laughs> Our next and last stop is right on the edge of NoHo. It's a commissioned artwork that may be easy to miss at this busy commercial intersection, but is certainly worth knowing about. The latest mural to adorn the iconic Houston Bowery Wall is entitled Untitled 2019 by the Brooklyn-based Japanese contemporary artist Tomokazu Matsuyama. According to Street Art News, this 1,300 square foot work incorporates a detailed fine art technique of layering Japanese and American imagery with contemporary textile design that reflects New York City's global culture. Legend has it that Keith Haring commandeered the entire wall with a mural of his own back in 1982. The wall then became reactivated in 2008 when its owners launched an official program to commission artists from around the world. 
so if you miss seeing this mural, you're sure to see something special in this space whenever you're able to visit. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed Robin's Ride and that you consider checking out this tour when you're ready to hop on your trusty set of wheels. Until then, see you the next time.